Welcome to the Law, Your Money, and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Massachusetts. And I'm Camille Barron, a healthcare advisor and financial coordinator, also in Sharon, Massachusetts. And this is someone today we've been trying to get on the show for the longest time, but he never seemed to be able to make time for us until mm. today. I know, we're so lucky. Yes, we and, are. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Todd Whiting. Did I say that right? You got it right. Except First Todd, Todd is 1D. I want everybody to know it's 1D. Uh, yes. And I'm going to have him tell us, that we always say, tell us a little bit about yourself. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in the wonderful community of Lexington. My family Ooh. lived there for 300 plus years. Oh, well, they're boy. pretty old then, huh? Yeah, the I'm pretty old. <laughs> been around, my a family's town. been around a long time. Did Originally they come moved over to the, the country. 1727. Really? Yes. Oh. And that and about $2.50 gets me a cup of coffee <laughs> at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Sharon in 1984 after marrying my beautiful wife. At mm. that time, she was Cheryl Roach. I got the pick of the litter from Joe Roach's daughters. I got the best one. <laughs> and Joe Roach, too, was very well known. He was yes. probably one of the best selectmen we ever had. Except no, he was a, he, more than that, he was just a good guy. He was. He was one of my best friends for 40-plus oh, nice. years. So. Oh, boy. I miss him. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I... So you've got a family now. You've got, mm -hmm. uh, you've got two grandchildren now? I've right. got three daughters, two grandchildren, I am a recent empty nester, but it's not that empty because they come back to visit all the time, several times a week. So we have to keep the refrigerator and the pantry stocked. <laughs> uh, That's good. Uh, and you're also president of the uh, local Rotary, which right. they're very fortunate to have you. Yeah, I guess I was the only one left. <laughs> 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 I, spent, I spent a long time being involved in Sharon. I started working in the youth softball program oh. when my oldest daughter, who's 33 now, was in kindergarten. And I continued with it all the way up till my youngest graduated high school. And then I spent two more years on the Boosters Club. Helping the oh boy, group. and you don't even look that old, don't mm. you look good? Yes, I turned 60 this year. <laughs> oh boy, you look, you look very good. Must be the fake hair or something. Mm. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. It's turning gray, slowly but surely. No, you really look good. But Thank what you. else is good about you, and what we want our visitors to know, and there's a lot that you can have, tell them about, like, on different scams and everything, what to watch out for. But what you do, and you do it so orderly, because we've done business with you, mm -hmm. even your businesses, the way you do your rotary and everything, is an housing, 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 what would you say? Inspections. Inspections, all kinds of inspections. So let us viewers know about this. So many of them don't realize what's involved. Well, there's a lot of misconceptions about home inspections. Some people think they're more than they are. Some people think they're less than they are. Some people don't realize how important they are. People buying new homes don't think they need a home inspection. They do because we no longer have, many of our contractors are not craftsmen, they're tradesmen. And there's a difference. What is it? A tradesman does the job and they do the job okay, but a craftsman puts his heart and soul into it. They take ownership of everything they're doing and they want everything to be right. And that doesn't always happen today. Well, that's how we find you. So we would call <laughs> you a craftsman. I mean, you really got well, some fans I don't do here. anything like that, but I try to do the best job I can. Mm -hmm. uh, people buying older homes, they need to know that the home inspection isn't a code compliance inspection. The home inspector isn't going to call anything or shouldn't be calling anything a code violation, but he needs to know how things should be today so he can talk to the client about recommended repairs, recommended replacements, and recommended upgrades. Because people don't look at their homes the same way they do their car. You own your car, you bring it in for an oil change, 
every three months or so. And if you're buying a new car, you're trading it in by Not hundred. every few years? <laughs> no, not every few years, Roberta. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have Jerry. <laughs> Jerry takes care of your car maintenance for you. Uh, people take care of their cars, and they tend to ignore their homes. Interesting. Should, if anything, it, you would think it would be the other way around, right? Not well, that you want to ignore the People service. don't know the life expectancy of the components of their home. They don't oh. know when they should be trading in their heating system for a new or more energy efficient system. Oh. They don't know that Mass Save will give them an energy audit, which they've already paid for. On every energy bill, there is an energy efficiency surcharge. And that's how Mass Save is funded, is through that surcharge. Hmm. So you've already paid into it, you may as well take advantage of it. Hmm. Mass Save will come in and replace all of your light bulbs from incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. to LED bulbs. Hmm which are much more energy efficient and will last a much no longer charge. time. Yeah. And then if you need to update your heating system, if you need to update your water heater, they can give you a zero interest loan for up to seven years or provide access to that loan to be able to make those updates in a reasonable fashion and not break the bank. Hmm. And most people don't realize good. No, it. I don't think they do. They'll provide 75% of the cost of insulating your home. And the energy audit to make all that happen is free. All you have to do is call Mass Save. Hmm. So those are some of the things that we as home inspectors identify as the need to update an older heating system, older water heater, uh, older windows, lack of insulation. Those are the ways we help homeowners or home buyers. Hmm. So um, it's a, a prospective buyer of a home, right? That or a seller. <laughs> Some people will do an inspection mm. prior to putting the home on the market, mm -hmm. which is a good idea. It's a good financial decision for the short cost of a home inspection. They can then disclose all of the conditions of the home up front, mm -hmm. which means they're off the negotiation table. Somebody can see the report. Somebody can see the conditions. They can also take that opportunity to do some of the repairs or to go out and get estimates for the repairs, which means they can have a more solid price structure. If they've done the repairs or they know how much the repairs might cost, they can say that this is what it's going to cost you. That's why the price of the home is oh, the way that's it a good is. Idea. Now, now, some uh, owners may not want to do the upgrades or even the right. inspection. So they disclose because, it. Yeah, because the, well, a lot of times the buyers just take a home inspection and use it as a way to cut down the price and then they don't do the repairs either. Absolutely. And that's okay. And that's mm. what people do. Everybody understands that part of the real estate game, that it's a renegotiation. But if they do the inspection in advance, they can take that renegotiation off the table. So the subject, people will probably still have another home inspection, but the odds mm. of two home inspectors not finding the same things are small. Does it generally happen that way, that they find the same things? Most people don't see the value in it. Uh, so it's yeah. not it something we do a lot of. Mm -hmm. Well, what if, uh, what if the uh, water heater or oil burner or anything works fine, but it's not the most up-to-date one? What, what sometimes they say you touch something and you're better off to have left it alone. Well, the Board of Registration Home Inspectors in our standards has a definition for that type of component. It's oh. called fully depreciated. And it means the component has reached the end of its anticipated serviceable life or its manufacturer's warranty period and may require mm -hmm. repair or replacement within a short period of time. A lot of people will trade their car in at 150,000 miles. That's an average time frame for people that buy new cars to trade their car in. Really? Mm -hmm. But my daughters, when they were in high school, would go out and buy those cars and run them into the ground, which would be about 250,000 miles. But the reason people do that is because they don't want the aggravation of additional maintenance costs, mm -hmm. et cetera. They don't want the worry of being caught on the side of the road. So the anticipated serviceable life of a modern furnace is 18 to 20 years. 
It'll last longer than that, but its serviceable life or economic life is 18 to 20 years. If at that point you update it to a newer version, you're going to get a more energy efficient system mm -hmm. and you don't have the worries of additional maintenance. And then here you have the ones that break down after 10 years when they're supposed right. to last 20. The more energy efficient they become, the shorter they're lasting. Why is that? The, uh, the materials that are used, the systems that are used, natural gas when it burns gives off carbon monoxide. Yeah. But it also water comes out of it, which causes corrosion. Mm. And things like sulfur and sulfuric acid come out, which also causes corrosion and deterioration mm -hmm. to the systems. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we have more damage to the systems. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may just be planned obsolescence. Oh. That we're not going to make any money if we build a boiler that's going to last 80 years. Like oh, the old me. American what, standard. What is it? And why is it that they don't last as long? A lot of it has to do with the stuff we're burning, the way the systems work and being more energy efficient. More things come out of the natural gas when we burn it. Uh, but a lot of it also has to do with the materials that are being used. Today's boilers are being made with cast aluminum as opposed to cast iron. Mm. Um, and some of the steel products also don't last as long. The cast iron boilers, the best boiler in, that was ever made is an American standard boiler that was built in the late 1920s to... So why don't they make them like that again? Oh, cause, uh, there's no money in it oh, and they're not that energy efficient. But a lot of those American standard boilers are still running. Oh really? We still find them in homes mm. in this area of the country. Now people say gas is more efficient than oil. Yes. Except to run a new gas line can be Sometimes you can't outrageous. get gas. Yeah. Where I live on Quincy Street, gas isn't... I'm the only house on Quincy Street that doesn't have gas because the gas line stopped before Paul Revere Road and they stopped before the stream that's beside my property. It would just cost me too much money to go to gas. Oh. So yeah, I have so oil. that's where it's not cost efficient. That's when right. things happen. But there's a really nice system, the System 2000, that is a 92% efficient oil burner that is working great. I just had that replaced with the heat loan. Wow, that's great. That's well, you must have, how do you know about all of these different yeah. components of a home? Did Good you question. learn it on the job or did you already know these things? I learned it through the home inspection business. I've done over 7,000 home inspections. Oh, and in earlier days, I also worked as a real estate appraiser and did 3,000 residential real estate appraisals. Oh, God. So mm -hmm. you learn a lot over that time. Mm -hmm. I, when I started, I was a franchisee of a company and as part of what I did with them, they brought me in to teach and train home inspectors for their franchise. And what I taught was the central heating and central cooling section of the training at doing a home inspection. And yet people still have not heard about this. Does the banks, when somebody buys a house or real estate or anything, do the banks require an inspection? No. They don't? But, but people get it. I know we get it for residential, we get it for commercial. Mm -hmm. People get it. I, we're very busy. We do, we're looking to do about 1,200 inspections this year. And there's a lot of, about 75% of the people have a home inspection. But mm -hmm. we want the other 25% to get a home inspection too. <laughs> now, what are some of the things that buyers should be aware of when they are hiring an inspection company? Good question. Well, first of all, they want to make sure that they're licensed in the state of Massachusetts. Or any other state. Well, because people, people at a Rhode Island be... doesn't have licensing. Mm -hmm. Connecticut Who doesn't? does. Who Rhode doesn't? Island is not licensed. Really? New Hampshire is, Maine is, Massachusetts. Rhode Island being the way Rhode Island is, in 2001, they passed a law that you had to be licensed to become a home inspector. And then they decided to not fund the law. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get a license in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Nobody in Rhode Island is licensed. Mm -hmm. Eventually they'll fund it. Uh, How about out west? Do you know anything about the other states? Let's see. The other states? 
Florida's <laughs> licensed, Texas is licensed. Texas mm. has the strictest licensing laws. Illinois is licensed. What do you mean the strictest? What do they have? Every home inspector has to fill out the same form. It's not oh. 600 different home inspectors with 600 different reports like we have in Massachusetts. They have what's called the TREC form and every home inspector has to fill it out. And, and all the information that's on it has to be done. Really? Uniform? Yeah. So what is uniform? Right, it's similar to the uniform uh, appraisal form for residential appraisal for bank appraisals. Mm -hmm. And as much as that every real estate appraiser has to fill out that form. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's interesting. That's how it is in Look at Texas. All the things you're learning today. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's interesting. Um, I do network with home inspection companies throughout the country. Mm -hmm. I have an accountability partner in Georgia and mm -hmm. another one in Ch the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. so other uh -huh. than the licensing, what are some of the other things that they would have to be aware they of? They want to find out about their insurance. Massachusetts requires that home inspectors only have $250,000 worth of errors and emissions insurance. They don't have to have general liability insurance. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have that. And as a business, you have to have unemployment insurance and workers' compensation insurance. Right. But if you have a 1099 employee, which that's supposed to have, uh, home inspectors should be W-2 employees. Uh, well, a 1099 is where you hire a, an independent contractor. They're not your right. employee. But, so. it, but with home inspectors, if I'm telling them where to be, when to be there, how to do the inspection, uh, when to deliver the yeah. inspection, what to wear, what to say, then they're not an independent contractor. They're working for me. So they are W-2 employees. And that's something they should check out. Is, do they have workers' compensation insurance? Do they have a full business owner's package of insurance? We carry a million dollars of general liability right. and a million dollars of errors and emissions insurance, and we have an umbrella mm -hmm. to protect everyone. Mm. And we've never had to pay a claim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Do you ever have to get out on a ladder and go up to a roof or something, the ladder? In the old days, I did. And what if you fall off the ladder? Does your workman's you comp boom. cover you? Does, does your workman's comp cover you? Or you it covers me. Owner? It covers my employees provided. Isn't that interesting? It's yeah. something. Now, OSHA regulations prohibit my employees from going on the roof by themselves. Okay, what's There the has OSHA? to be a fall plan in place. There has to be the occupation oh. safety. Yeah, but health. tell us, viewers, what OSHA is. Occupational Safety and Health Association. I believe that's what it stands for. They regulate safety in the workplace. And they don't allow individual home inspectors that are employees to go on the roof without a fall plan, without a harness, and without yeah, a partner. So you have to learn how to identify the conditions of a roof without going on the roof. Hmm. Put a cat What else? There. What else about, you said licensing yeah, and then insurance? Are they certified to do radon testing? How are they going to do the radon testing? Who's going to set the test up? Who's going to pick the test up? With the, I mean, really the now person... Now go into detail. I'm an interrupter, but okay. go into detail. A lot of people don't know what radon is. Radon is an odorless, colorless, radioactive gas that the EPA has determined to be the second leading cause of lung cancer. Really? with about 28,000 deaths annually attributed to exposure to radon gas. How do you tell the... the you have to radon. test. The only way to tell is to test. And this is a perfect time to talk about it because the EPA has declared January Radon Action Month. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't know that either. Why would you know no, that? We're smart. <laughs> we know a lot of things, yeah, but we, we didn't know that. You didn't know it was Radon Action Month. <laughs> And EPA recommends that every home below the third floor be tested every two to three years. Why every two to three years? years? Yes, the reality is homes get tested at a real estate transaction, if at all. Why below the third floor? Because by the time the gas gets to the third floor, it's so diluted from other things that it's not no longer poses a significant risk. Oh, so the conditions in a home can change every two to three years, and that's why? Radon comes from the breakdown of uranium. Mm -hmm. Uranium is found in areas that are high in granite ledge. And Massachusetts, being high in granite ledge, 
has a lot of radon in it. Radon, mm -hmm. as the uranium breaks down, it becomes radium, and then the radium becomes radon. The gas passes from the ground, from areas of high pressure in the ground, through fissures, and comes into the basement through the cracks in the foundation, oh uh, cracks in the floor. And, just and that just comes from the land outside? Comes from naturally occurring, comes from the ground. Mm. And mm. we're not talking about giant boulders of uranium. We're talking radon gas can come from radon the size of my thumb, mm -hmm. or from uranium the That's size of my thumb. That's kind of frightening, thumb. isn't it? No. In a way? Because radon mitigation systems are 100% effective in reducing the levels of radon, provided they're properly installed. Who, who does that? Radon mitigation know. companies. As some of them are competition to me, I won't mention their names. Really? <laughs> Hi, did, you, did you ever have a radon inspection? We did, but it was a long time ago. And I'm, now I'm wondering about the timing of maybe having another one. You can one. have yeah. a professional company like me come in and do it for you. Mm -hmm. You can order the test kits through AccuStyle Labs up in Haverhill, which would be a much more economical way for you to do it. There are two ways to test. You can do a short-term test hmm. or you can do a long-term test. Short-term test is from 20, uh, 48 to 96 hours, two to four days. The long-term test is from 91 days to a year. Oh. The short-term test, you have to keep your house closed. You can't open your windows. You can't ventilate the house. You can go in and out your doors. You're not trapped inside or outside, but you can't open things. With the long-term test, you just live in your home the way you live in your home. The mm -hmm. If Boy. you live in your home and you're going to do a test, the long-term test is the one to do. So it doesn't matter if you have gas heat, oil heat, you could still have radon. Mm -hmm. now, um, now what about lead paint? Another scary topic. Lead paint not... is found in homes built before 1978. So there isn't that much around anymore, or no, is there? No, there's a lot of it around. Oh, is there? Yeah. Go into any house, any of the old, side entrance colonials that were built in the 1900s, 1920s. If your house was built before 1978, there's a chance you have lead paint. And it's the reality of living in New England. We have the oldest housing stock in the country. This mm -hmm. year we've inspected homes that were built in the late 1600s all the way Boy. up to new construction. Um, now, do you inspect, for, do you do historical inspections too, or is that Well, we in inspect I... antique homes. I put on a class about antique homes for... Really? Realtors and for home inspectors. I put on, just put on a class on luxury homes and what makes a home a luxury home. And it's not just the size and the price. No, it's if they have electricity. <laughs> they have, that works. Well, it's had some recent updates. What updates? Oh, recent. What are some recent updates? Is it, well, we're almost still, you got to be kidding, but this ought to be good. What are, <laughs> seriously, what are recent, recent updates? Recent updates, well, new wiring. Oh, pro yeah. Proper yeah. circuit panels. Uh, yeah. Soaker tubs that have a hydro spa in them. Massive bathrooms with double sinks, marble counters, marble floors, mm -hmm. uh, multi person shower stalls, like I said, large soaker tubs. What about the GF? GFCI, G -I -F -G -I -F -G that's required, that's, any home no can have, what? every home's required to have GFCI, every home's required, that's built today is required to have arc fault protection. Uh, upgraded kitchens, upgraded kitchens with six burner stoves with a pot filling faucet right there at the stove, bidets in the bathroom. And, uh, yeah, I like the pot filling one there, I'd like to get one of those. That's a problem just waiting to happen. Oh, it is? You're just about kidding. every faucet will leak at some point. Oh, yeah. If a faucet's over a sink, it leaks into the sink and there's You're no problem. Kidding, huh? If it's over the stove and it leaks Ooh. on the stove, it just means people have to pay attention. It's a nice feature. I love the feature, but you just have to pay attention to it and make sure that you've actually shut it off and make sure that it's not leaking at times. You have to pay attention. Well, I think if you keep a man away from it, men have a habit of not turning things off. The best <laughs> chefs in the world are men. Just ask them. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to oh, be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ask them if they're the best chefs. <laughs> I, I notice that men in general leave. I mean, I guess this is, uh, you can't call it a racist comment, but it's okay if you do. But <laughs> the men, men go in a room, they put a light on, and they don't, 
remember that it's got to be turned off. <laughs> you just don't know That's how. That's why we get married. <laughs> so you have somebody yeah. to remind us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> oh, that's a good sport you are. <laughs> yeah. Here's a joke you'll probably appreciate. I saw oh, it oh, wait, at wait, wait. Uh, Honeydew Donuts in Canton. And <laughs> why do elephants have wrinkles? Uh, why do elephants have wrinkles? Yes. Uh, why do I, and this They're is a new one. They're too big to iron. <laughs> They're too big to iron? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you ever tried to iron an elephant? <laughs> no, no but why her. would you? <laughs> to get out the wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't get it. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> this is a you got to be kidding bag. Okay. And in it, do, do you have any funny you got to be kidding stories? Well, my favorite phrase is, in a listing sheet, an MLS listing sheet. An uh, MLS is multiple, multiple listing, listing service. service. That's yeah. where everybody looks for their homes. Yeah. Uh, is all the work is done, all you need to do is move in. Oh yeah, I see uh, that. One property I did, this is many, many years ago, but it sticks in my mind, is it said those words in it, gleaming hardwood floors, new heating system, new electrical system, all the work is done, just move in. Yeah. The gleaming hardwood floors were peel and stick, wood tone vinyl tiles. Oh. The boiler was installed, but it wasn't installed with a permit. Oh. And it was installed incorrectly. The electric panel wasn't oh, installed with a permit. Oh, and when my the real estate agent got back to me and she had gone to check for permits for all the work that was done, there was $42,000 worth of work that had to be done Ooh. on a house that was selling for about $165,000. Holy moly. And they said, just move in. They and I said, said, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say the same thing. They should have put be it as is. Yeah. Well, they wound up keeping the deal together, and the repairs really? got done, the permits got pulled and closed, and the woman was happy with the home. <laughs> That's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Well, she must have got a good deal. Yeah. Well, she got $42,000 worth of more work then. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> don't know. It's a, you know, we talk about, that's not even a scam, no. but uh, we always talk about scams because there always seems to be a new one. Are there any scams in, in your business? There has to be. <laughs> not really. But really? I mean, the biggest scam out there is the fact that there are some home inspectors that specialize in apartment condominiums. Or some oh. inspectors that specialize in apartment. What about condoms? mold? I've, somebody told me that the uh, person sold them a house and they had the mold covered up, and they also had a home inspector. So I said, well, I home said, inspectors well, go call don't the look home for inspector. mold. They home, don't. They look for moisture damage. They don't look oh. for mold per se. Mold is outside what we're doing. Oh. It's the only way to really tell if it's mold is to test it. Hmm. But the biggest scam, as far as mold goes, is toxic black mold. Mm -hmm. There's no such species of mold. Black really? is just a color. Oh, really? And what, toxic what isn't my, a species. No. What about my bagels that were green after three days? Did is you that eat them? Mold? No. <laughs> no, even I went to eat them. But is there, that mold? That's it's mold. It's probably penicillium mold, which is where penicillin comes from. Really? Now, there are molds that produce toxins. Oh, but black but most mold molds is are in Black mold can also be yellow, orange, pink, or blue. <laughs> we have to green. wrap up the show because we're, oh. getting, we're getting the word here. Oh, mm. oh and I have the, the scams. Well, uh, well, we'll wait. Oh, it'll wait, but they would have been the Star Wars scam and the Luke Skywalker scam. And this is so, so, you so interesting. interesting. I didn't, yeah, I'd say probably. most of this I didn't know yeah, at all. Yeah, me too. And I know everything. I could go on for another three hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll have to have you come back. Yeah. That's fascinating. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so You're much very for welcome. being here. Yeah, thank you so much. You're really and great. And to our viewers, I'm sure that you found this very informative as we did. Yeah. If you have any questions about home inspections, send us an email and we'll make sure it gets to Todd. Yeah, with one D. <laughs> Todd with one D. That's right. Hawaiians elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiians elephants. Right. And so. I want to thank you for watching our show today. And please do let us hear from you, whether it's questions or you have any ideas or suggestions right. for future topics. Because remember, this is your show. 
the law, your money, and you.